Okay, what are we studying in science right now? All right, so we're using Real Science for Kids. This is book number five. I use it with my fourth graders, and it gives a basic foundation of several different science topics. Right now, we're on chemistry. So we were talking about atoms yesterday, so I wanted to take an opportunity to do a little hands-on with you because I know it was hard to visualize, I think. So what is right in the middle of the atom? What do we call this dense concentrated thing in the middle of the atom. Do you remember? The nucleus. Nucleus, yes, thank you. So I'm gonna write nucleus right here. That's another word for a core, right? So we have our nucleus in the middle. Now, which parts of the atom are in the nucleus? The electrons? And Not the electrons. And there is protons, protons and neutrons. neutrons. Protons and neutrons. Okay, Hannah, if I tell you the protons are plus one, which color should we use for protons? Pink or blue? Blue. Blue is plus one. So we have, in our nucleus, we have plus ones. These are protons. This is where math meets science, okay? So... If these are our protons, they are all, and I have pom-pom here, guys, these are all worth plus one points, let's say, okay? Then I have green pom-poms here. These are gonna be neutrons. What are these worth? Minus, Minus one. No, what are they worth? Zero. Zero, neutrons are worth zero points. They have no charge, right? So we're actually talking about like electrical charges here. So we also have our zeros in there. So we have plus ones and zeros in the nucleus. And we call the plus ones? Protons. Protons. And what do we call the zeros? Neutrons. Neutrons, Neutrons like neutral, right? Neutral. So we have plus one proton, zero neutrons. Okay, neutrons. now our electrons. And so guys, what I'm drawing here is the structure of an atom. All atoms have a similar structure. Did you know that? So it's sort of like houses, Hannah. All houses will have four walls and a roof, right? And then As the houses get bigger, we get different, what? More and more rooms. And so the same thing happens, whoa, let's collect our pom-poms, please. The same thing happens with our atoms. They get bigger and bigger. So when we look at our periodic table, how is our periodic table organized? Do you remember? Yeah, tell me. By the chemical reaction and how many like protons and neutrons they have. You know what I mean? To. How much it adds up to. Right, so it is, it is both, you're, we're getting there, we're getting there, I promise, you're gonna have a turn. So it is organized this way by its size, Hannah. The elements are organized by their size, and you're right, they're organized this way by how they react, right? So these all react similarly. These don't react at all, right? Yeah. So, good, so we have our weights here. So what happens is, is if we have this house that we call an atom, yeah, these it's, protons it's, and the neutrons. It's, it's really small, and you get big and more big. Right, and then the house gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we start, when it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we're cramming more people into it. We're cramming more protons, neutrons, and electrons into it. So we need more yeah. space. But here's the thing. Like, these are... Can I tell you? Those are your guys. Those are your proton guys. Yeah. Protons I and neutrons... Like blue. Okay, my turn. Ready? Protons and neutrons, your green and your pink, they're sort of like the adults. They're really well behaved. And they just all, the more you add in the more they just hang out in the nucleus. They wanna hang out with the other adults, right? So now I've got five in here. I've got two neutrons, I've got three protons, right? So the more I add, let's say I add all of our protons. Can you put all of the protons in there? Yeah. And all of our neutrons? It doesn't matter. They're gonna all hang out in the like kitchen and talk. All the adults are gonna stay there. The reason that this gets, well, it's gonna get heavier, Right? Yeah. It's gonna get heavier because we put more protons and neutrons in it, right? Right? What it's gonna get heavier. Is? These are our electrons. electrons. And what charge do electrons have? Minus one. Minus one oh. for an electron. So if we want Is that our good or bad? It's neither. 
It just is. What do you think? I think, I think it's good because if we have positives, we need to have negatives, right? So negative one is for our electrons. And the electrons are like the kids in the atom. The electrons are like the kids in the atom because they're a little wild and they can't sit still. So what happens is the electrons go out here and they run around. I think I'm a proton. You think you're more like a proton? You've sort of grown up. I, I agree, you're very mature. So yeah, our electrons, so the more electrons we have, the more rooms we need, right? So the electrons are running around, and let me tell you, this first room that we added onto our building, it's called a shell. This is called a shell. So we have a nucleus and a shell. Yes. yes. You know what this reminds me of? What? The solar system. It is really like the solar system. Do you know why? If we have all of these positives in the middle, what's holding these electrons in place? Gravity. No, these are negative. The positives are in oh, the middle. Oh, magnetic. The charge, magnetic. right? The charge is holding it in orbit around the nucleus. Oh. Totally holding it in orbit around the nucleus. And this matters because look, if our blue ones, our electrons are negative one, and our pink ones are plus one, this is Mom, where we're gonna do our math. If Mom, I put, Mom, can I write something? not yet, I'm gonna let you write on your own. <coughs> Hannah, can you hand me that pad of paper at the other end of the table? I'll give Eva her paper and she can draw. Okay, because now we start our game. So here's, Hannah, put it down for Eva. Now we're gonna start our game. I get to pick how many protons go in the middle. And you guys have to figure out how many electrons will go in the outer shells. Can I get off the table, please? Does it Thank always you. equal zero or one? It's zero like right points? now. Good question. Right now, we're going to make all neutral atoms that have no net charge. It has to equal zero at the end. So, so let's make neutral atoms first. So like. So here we go. I'm going to make. Do you remember what the atomic number tells us? Yes, it's how much, um, what you would call it, the weight is. Protons, right? It is, it is sort of related to the weight. Wait, but hydrogen, okay, hydrogen has one proton. Who's going first? Okay, show me how many electrons it, it gets. If it's neutral hydrogen, one electron. Very good. All right, Max, you're on helium, two protons. Give me some new um, some electrons. I'm gonna put a neutron in there too. I think it has a neutron. Two electrons. I like it. Oh, and these electrons, the reason this is a dotted line, these are actually moving around. They're in orbit. Right? They they're active. Atoms are active. And hey, what we well, could do, in, like there's a book that has the elements and then underneath it is this, and then they have like the lines and balls around them. That's we could perfect. Like um, a it looks like solar system. So can I tell you something that's not in the book? These shells, can I, good job, I really like that. You copied me really well. These shells have a name and they have a capacity. So this first room on this can only hold two kids. We can only have two electrons in this one. And it's called the K orbit or the K shell. So you can only have two in that one. So what happens then when I put three protons in there and we want it to be a neutral atom? Where does the next electron have to go? That's four. Oh, I'm sorry. What happens when we put three? The next one has to go to the next shell out and that one is L. This one is L. Yeah, can you please thank you? L. And L is much bigger, right, Hannah? A piece L's much that, bigger. That's really dark. And it holds eight electrons, right? So now we have two shells. We have an L and we have a K, and the L holds, or the K holds two, and the L holds eight. So I can build this up to eight protons, to ten protons, right? And ten electrons, right? 
So let me tell you, let me ask you, Max, when we have just three protons in the middle, and we've put our three electrons on this, right? So I have two on this K inner shell, and I have one, one lonely one hanging out out here, being pulled in by only three protons. This atom is kind of unstable. This is pretty loose out here. Oh, like the because unstable the, atoms in there. Yeah, so that's how we end up with molecules and charges. Yeah. Anna, I need that, honey, thank you. Um, that's how we end up with unstable molecules and, and charges. Right now, this is zero, has a zero charge as an atom, right? But this one's so loose. So let's say some other atom comes over here with a stronger positive charge in the middle. This one's gonna go whoop. I'm attracted over there now. So now, what charge does this have? With three plus protons one. in the middle, two electrons, it lost an electron, it is now a plus one. Yes. And which charge Which uh, molecule is it? Let's, um, let's look chart. at the chart. I'm sorry, I should, I should tip this over on the right side so that we keep. Oh. Which one is it gonna be? Well, it has an atomic number of three for three protons. Yeah. So which one is it? It's lithium. Yes. It's lithium plus one. It's a lithium ion now. Oh, what's now on it's the an ion. Yes, and all of these in this column, it's going to be very easy for them to lose one. Hey, Mom, I've got the lithium ion battery right over there. Should I go and grab it? No, you shouldn't, and I cleaned it up for you. It's not over there anymore. <laughs> So all of these in this column are really easy to turn into plus one atoms. Okay, so now what happens if we now have one with a really strong center, right? So I told you that the most we can have with these two shells is 10 protons, right? So what happens if we have just nine? Let's say we just have nine protons. How many electrons would we put in? And where would you put them? Ah, be careful. You oh, don't fill the wrong room. Oh, no. That's me. How many do we have? One, two, count. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now we have nine. How much does this outer one hold? Um, that one holds seven right now. It has seven, but it can hold eight. eight. So it's going to really want to fill up this room. It's only missing one, right? So the likelihood that this molecule will take an extra electron is pretty good because it wants to be full. That room wants to be full. The kids are going, we need one more kid to play our game with us. Who's going to play with us, right? Right? So they take on an extra electron. So now what charge does it have? Um, Minus one is true. An extra electron with a value of negative one is minus one, right? Because you have nine plus nine, negative 10, put them together, you end up with minus one. So which which element are we talking about now? Minus one. So no, how many protons do we have? Nine. So, so look the atomic at your number is nine. It's fluorine. Fluorine. It's fluorine with a negative charge, right? And so these, in this column, are all gonna be really likely to have one negative charge. And that's why they all react similarly, okay? So this isn't the end of the story. Our atoms can get huge, Hannah, and what happens is we add more and more rooms and they get exponentially bigger. Right, so it goes from two to eight. The next one up is going to hold 18. After that, the next one's gonna hold 32, right? So that's how our atoms are structured. Does it make so much sense now? And you can understand how the math works, right? It's just whether these electrons are more attracted to another atom or if the electron from another atom is more attracted to this one, right? And then the numbers balance out. Easy peasy? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you like it. Now, the other thing I wanted to show anybody who's watching is that we have these awesome games. They're called Valence 
and Valen's class. They are chemistry games, and we are playing them along with our chemistry because it's all about, one second, okay? I really like it. It's all about making chemical reactions with acids and bases and plus ones and minus ones and what reacts with each other and then how you can make deadly things even by reacting different elements together. Okay. All right, I'm wishing you guys all the simple things. I'll see you soon. Bye. Why do you say all the simple things? That's just what I like to say because I love simple.